So first of all, I, I wish to, to thank uh, Sergio because he wanted to, to have this uh, round table. I said to Sergio, we need more than one round tables because the arguments he wanted to discuss today are many and probably we should have seven round tables. I said, no, we cannot have four, seven, just have one, okay, in the future. And also to the organizers for inviting me. So many thanks for, for today. And uh, uh, today I'm, I am representing the industry, so the, usually it, it, it is the bad guy. And uh, basically, um, what I what I see, uh, and if you if you can show the, the, the first uh, slide, please, is is that um, in my experience, I have been working with Novamont for thirty years. Uh, Novamont is a producer of bioplastics. I started in nineteen ninety one, and I retired a couple of months ago. And uh, in my experience, uh, uh, the first 20 years, nobody cared about bioplastics. There was not attention at all. So everything started as, a, as attention about bioplastics about 10 years ago. And I think why, but I'm not going to say now, I'm going to say in the last part of uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, table, because I think we need also some substance. substance. And uh, basically, I think that uh, if I think of what producer would like to have is, as I wrote, normality. Uh, bioplastics now are treated as if they were strange materials, um, full of concern, full of potential problems to be carefully analyzed because who knows and so on. Um, which is fine, but it, it can be also it can be also a problem for the industry to be uh, surrounded uh, by so many uh, concerns, suspect, and and the potential criticism. We are ready to receive criticism, but but it would be good if the criticism can be discussed in several uh, round tables. <laughs> let's say. So uh, what we, we hope as producers is to see uh, our products to be normal. Uh, I, I wish to, thank you, uh, to start with a, with a term plastic. If we could, uh, as bioplastic industry, we would like to change the name, to invent a new, a new one, because bioplastics is not working well. Why? Because plastic is a term that today brings a lot of negative feeling. Plastic is fossil oil, which means uh, production of carbon dioxide, wo wo global warming. It means uh, recalcitrance to biodegradation, so build up in the environment, microplastics, toxins, so a lot of neg very negative feelings. So if I say plastic, everybody think, oh, this is something which is not good. Now, bioplastic is probably even worse because uh, I use bio, together with plastic so people ah okay this is greenwashing because plastic is negative but you are trying to say that it's bio so this is something which is not good i usually say this is like to say uh, non-radioactive plutonium if i go around say i have non-radioactive plutonium everybody would say you're crazy and we don't believe you so somehow this is a joke but somehow this is what is happening. The term is, is negative, but if we look at the meaning of plastic, plastic comes from Greek plastikos, which means that can be formed and melted. So basically it, it refers to the fact that I can use plastic to do uh, thermoforming and through thermoforming, which means uh, the melting and forming through a mold is a technique which is very, uh, useful, it is fast, it is simple, you can make automatic process, it can be easily uh, industrialized. So it's something which is good. We cannot uh, throw uh, plastic only because the plastics in the last uh, uh, years were indeed, uh, most of them recalcitrant and uh, made starting from, from oil. So what uh, it is, the good news uh, is uh, as far as bio-based and biodegradable plastics are concerned, Terminology is well developed. So there are several standards about terminology. I cannot go through them because this is a very long story, but 
who, who is interested in terminology, they can go and see the terms. The second, uh, the second point uh, is, uh, uh, please uh, the, the next slide, thanks, is about what bioplastics are made of. Clearly, I cannot give the recipe of, uh, of the, um, the plastics, but I can tell you that most, most is, uh, bioplastics are based on polyesters. And why? Because enzymes that split polyester bonds do exist in nature. So protease, esterase, proteinases. So it's something that nature recognizes as capable, let's say. And on top of that, uh, natural polymers such as starch, cellulose, deri derivatives. And then additives, additives, which is also uh, a term which nowadays is uh, creating a lot of troubles. Uh, Additives used in bio-based biodegradable plastics are not toxic by, and biodegradable as required by the standard. So this is something that also should be taken into account. Yes, there are additives, but let, there are additives and additives. Some of them uh, are creating a lot of problems. We know that, but not necessarily an additive because it is called additive is negative. Okay. The next point is uh, the environmental impact of bioplastics. Okay, many, many LCA, comparative LCAs on bioplastics are available. And usually, in order to make a comparison, you need a benchmark. And what is the benchmark? The benchmark are the products made with fossil oil. But in order to make a comparison valid and meaningful, one has to do this comparison, possibly in parallel, using the same approaches, the same level of details, and the same data quality. <clears throat> so you, you must run the two courses together in the same field, because otherwise the comparison is difficult. And uh, we need to say that the LCA and sustainability of fossil oil has been little studied. So oil, exploration, drilling, site management, transportation are not easily accessible for LCA analysis. You don't find a lot of studies. There are some studies which are sort of offic official uh, studies, but if you, if you want to do uh, an independent study on this subject, it, it is difficult. So this means that we are comparing something with something else, but this something else has not been studied deeply. So any comparison is difficult because the benchmark is not clear. And uh, that said, using the, this uh, approach and uh, with these methodological problems, you should uh, uh, know that uh, in, in general, because I'm talking about uh, not bioplastics with S plural. So in general, you have lower carbon footprint because uh, because of the use of bio-based uh, um, molecules. And on the other hand, you have uh, pejorative impact categories such as eutrophication, acidification, water use. These uh, impact categories are linked to agriculture. So you don't find these categories when you study fossil-based products because agriculture is not in included, it's not there. So this is also something which one has to keep in mind. If you look at products from agriculture, you will find that there are some uh, things which are worse because, uh, because agriculture is used in one case and not in another case. What is the good news? The good news is that the raw materials produced in bioplastics are made in countries where agriculture is well established and mature control and regulated. So it's sustainability is controlled. So there is not uh, uh, agriculture which is affecting um, biodiversity or other aspects like that, because it is agriculture already established. The next point. Yes, this is something that we hear very frequently. Bioplastics are in competition with food. Why? Because uh, there are bioplastics where 
food crops are used for industrial purposes. For instance, corn. Corn can be used for producing bioplastics, and corn can be used for food and feed. So this is a clear competition with food. But if we think it well, um, the uh, competition is established any time I use a field for industrial purpose, purposes. So if I grow cotton instead of corn, if I grow, if I grow a managed forest to produce lignocellulosic products instead of potatoes, I am doing competition with food. It, it is not so clear because uh, a forest, I see the, the, the tree, I, I, don't, I, don't, I cannot eat it. I cannot eat a tree. So for me, it's not food, but in this field, I could grow potatoes. So somehow, at some level, there was a decision to go uh, into a sort of competition with food. So this is something that should be explored and thought about. So before saying, oh, bioplastics, you are in competition with food. Okay, but many products are in competition with food that are around us. Eh? So the wood, paper are in competition with food, right? So, um, so the, concluding this point, the problem is wider and, can, and concerns uh, the use of soils. So what we should do with soil, it is not just about bioplastics, just the contrary. Bioplastics is a minor, tiny thing for, for this problem. And uh, another one, is, which is about uh, littering, because some people say that people, knowing that a product is biodegradable, they tend to throw it easily because they see, oh, this is biodegradable, who cares? I can throw it, it will degrade sooner or later. And this is also to me strange because there are already products around us that have been recognized as, that are known as biodegradable and they have been around for centuries, by the way. And the question I ask is, are there evidences that cellulose-based products are more prone to littering than other products, such as glass, aluminum, conventional plastic. So paper is more prone to littering than plastic. I don't think so. I don't think so. So basically, and I don't think we have data on that. I don't think we have data on that. So instead of talking about bioplastics, that is 0.1% or, or even less of the market, we should, first of all, uh, make an analysis on the story of littering and see if other products are, are, are more prone to littering because they are bio-based, biodegradable, and so on. This is, I think, an important point. The good news is that bioplastics are not advertised as biodegradable, but as compostable. So you find in Italy and Europe, you find, uh, if you go into the supermarket, you find compostable, compostable, compostable. Certification is about compostable. It is not written, biodegradable in nature or something like that. So this is important. What is this uh, ring? It's 15 minutes, okay. Three more minutes, okay, we'll be very, very fast. Uh, the, the next point is, uh, uh, Bioplastics create uh, microplastics. The next slide, okay, thank you. Yes, it is very likely because if I have degradation, I, I will have also disintegration. So fragments will be formed. The issue is what is the lifespan of these fragments? Because if the lifespan is sh much shorter than uh, other materials, then the, the problem, the risk to the environment will be shorter. So when we talk about microplastics, we need also to consider We'll see what is the permanence uh, time. We did uh, um, a simulation, and the curves shown in this slide show this simulation where we try to see what is the buildup of polyethylene in comparison with uh, biodegradable plastics, biodegradable polymers, because also cellulose was uh, in this study. And, and, and you see that the, the, the spike, the first spike is the buildup curve of a biodegradable product, while the large, long curve is for polyethylene, which is not biodegradable. So uh, the two things are very, very, very different, even if both create microplastics. Uh, the next one is about uh, bioplastics ruin the recycling of plastics. 
And this is also strange because when we go into the recycling field, as I wrote, is all against all. So you cannot mix anything with anything else. Even polyolefin cannot be mixed together. So polyethylene and polypropylene must be kept separated in order to have good recycling. So this is true for everything. We have uh, optical system to separate bioplastics and they will be applied in the moment the economy will be ready. If the volume will be enough, the methods to separate uh, bioplastics are ready. The good news is that uh, biodegradable compostable products are recovered through organic recycling. And uh, it must be uh, remembered that bio waste uh, will be mandatory. The collection of sorry of bio waste will be mandatory in Europe uh, in one year. Yeah. So this is also important. The, the last, no, it is not the last, but the, the next one uh, is about uh, the fact that uh, I will skip this because I, I think to go to another important point. Bioplastics are not truly compostable because they are rejected by the composting plants. Now, when separate collection is not effective and the bio waste is highly contaminated by conventional plastics, aluminum cans, bottle of glass, bulky waste, etc., composting plants need to have system to eliminate them upstream because all this, all this uh, stuff can be a problem. Now, if a the screening is upstream, this system also rejects uh, compostable plastics. They do not recognize that something is compostable or not. They just see, this is a bulky stuff. I don't want bulky stuff, I reject. It. So this is a potential problem. The other potential problem is then when the screening is carried out after a few days from the start of the process, when the process is still in full swing. In this case, larger items can still be not fully degraded. For instance, branches, pieces of wood, walnut shells, and also bulky uh, bioplastics objects. So it is clear that today the, there are plants that can have uh, technical hindrances based on a specific system. What is important, and the good news is that in Italy at least, the Italian Composting Association said that most plants are capable of handling compostable plastic waste. So basically, yes, there can be problems, but problems can be solved. So basically, any problem can be solved if, if there is a, a will. <laughs> Uh, so basically, if uh, plants can be, uh, if the collection is improving, as it should, if plants adjust their system in order to cope with a waste which is less contaminated and so on, if uh, uh, these rigid items are treated as branches and recirculated as they do in composting plants, the problem will be reduced and reduced. And uh, okay, the last one is uh, about uh, uh, many thanks for your attention and I hope I was uh, more or less within the 15 minutes. Thank you.